Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. Yes, I've now got a unique website for this podcast. Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. It's still available everywhere else that it always has been. All the other podcasts, uh, hosts, you know, Spotify, uh, iTunes and all those places. But it's now got its own little home. So you can go there and listen, download all of the hundred and, what is it, 19 so far that I've recorded. Uh, my main website still jasonnewlands.com. That's the hub. <laughs> the hub sounds like some kind of I don't know weird club. Um, some porn empire or something, but it's not. So yeah, um, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes, as it may cause drowsiness. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, please like. I've got a bit of a campaign against me on YouTube, I think. I've got people disliking my, <laughs> my videos, which is... I kind of think, well, if they are crap, then fair enough. But I get a lot of positive um, feedback and a lot of... Um, a lot of regular listeners, you know, on my podcasts. So I don't know, maybe it's just a different audience on YouTube. But uh, I'll continue posting the videos on there because I've also got on, you know, I've got a few, got a few followers on there as well. But <laughs> just I don't know why it used to, because everything I used to do was mainly on YouTube in the old days, you know, um, by the way, I've just been drinking Coke and I feel a big burp coming and I'm not going to hold it in, I'm going to let it go, oh, it's alright, it was, uh, I had a little silencer on the end of it, so it's fine, so it's, uh, like a little hitman burp, so I had, yeah, I had a podcast. I think it was called freepodcast.com. Uh, I probably talked about this, but I've probably talked about everything in the past. You know, 120 hours of me talking so far on these podcasts. I've probably covered everything at least three times. Um, so that was quite a successful podcast for me. It was the first podcast I ever did. I ever had and it was on the free podcast dot com was the host and it's free and I had I think I had about a hundred thousand downloads on there at the beginning of 2008 and I've been on there for probably about a year or maybe longer and uh, for some reason I mean, I was getting thousands every day, thousands of, you know, it's like 3,000 downloads a day or something ridiculous at some point. And, uh, and then it just, they didn't ask anybody to pay them money. They had adverts on there at the beginning, which was, you know, they, they didn't, which was, I guess, how they financed it. But had they asked for money, I would have paid them to keep the service because it was really good. It was a really good service. And that was really before YouTube and stuff like that became popular. Uh, long be you know, before Facebook. This was, what, 2006. Uh, yeah, onwards. So, anyway... I went to check my stats one day and 
I had lost about 50% of my audios. They just deleted them. And I hadn't, I hadn't backed them up because I was making quite a lot of relaxation and chronic pain audios at that time. So I lost a lot of my work. And, uh, yeah, this was a little bit annoying. And then gradually they stopped doing stats and gradually they just closed. They shut down. So I kind of gave up on podcasts for quite a while after that. Got a little bit disillusioned because it was it was so exciting at the time. I loved the idea that I was reaching people and, you know, reaching an audience and I was getting feedback and hopefully helping people. And then it was gone. It's like, uh um, Luckily, I didn't lose all of my sessions because I realised after losing 50%, I better back up the rest, which I did, and I managed to keep them. So, yeah, I kind of didn't bother with podcasts much after that for a few years, in fact. I can't remember the, the first time I started doing podcasts again. Yeah, it's probably probably been about 10 years or no not 10 years probably I don't know it's, you know when you kind of just can't, can't remember something that's where I am with this I can't remember I know that I've been on YouTube continuously pretty much since it started with a few breaks uh, so I concentrated on videos and I got a bit of an audience on YouTube and things were going fairly well there, so I didn't really bother with the podcasts. And then YouTube went a bit floppy. And I uh, thought, oh. Yeah, because I went from being one of the first people to do the kind of stuff that I was doing to being among lots of people doing it. And, you know, a lot of them were better. Better at it. Or more slicker, made better videos, maybe were better looking, you know, they made, they, they were just nicer to look at probably, there was me with my beard, and it's, and maybe they were better, you know, maybe the, the recording, the videos they made were just better content maybe, I don't know, I'm open to that, <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, proclaiming to be to be the best at anything but I'm the best that I can be I'm the best version of me I'm not I hope not I hope there's, I hope there's more to come but um, then you know I started getting back into the podcasts I think um, what's it called What's that? Uh, 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 uh. SoundCloud. So SoundCloud is... Oh, i tell you what happened. I started listening to a podcast. I saw something about Ricky Gervais had a podcast with... Uh, I can't remember his name, but his kind of sidekick. Um, tall, blonde glasses his name will come to me in a minute it's really funny as well but they did this podcast and it was on Lysync they used the light I think it light Linsync or something is the podcast host and they they had you know probably millions of listeners and stuff apart from the fact you know, obviously they're famous, but they, I think they broke a lot of records with the the popularity of the podcast, and I think they had something to do with the podcast kickstarting again, because they kind of went out of fashion a little bit for quite a while, I think. Not that they're in fashion, but I think they're more in fashion than they have been previously. And... 
the so I started looking around this is probably what year would that be 2010 probably two f- and then I started 2011 keep like searching for pod hosts podcast hosts and the problem I had was I had too many recordings so some of the record some of the podcast hosts would be uh, they've they had limited you know very limited to a certain amount of hours of recording per month and they'd be charging money because I wasn't going to go for any free version anymore I thought no I'm not doing that again I'll pay for it but some of them although they weren't expensive they had too many limitations you know only 10 hours of audio a month and I had like 100 hours already to upload it's like okay what am I going to do there probably more than a hundred that's hard to tell but quite a few anyway and let's see I'll give you an idea I have on my Spreaker podcast bear in mind some are repeated so uh, it's not going to be this amount exactly because I've got quite a few different podcasts, but this, so let's say Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis Sessions will also be on the Sleep Hypnosis Podcast. So will the Sleep Let Me Boy to Sleep ones. They'll also be on the Jason Newland Free Hypnosis Podcast. So there's a few crossovers. But my Spreaker account allows me 1,500 hours of audio to be stored and I've got 900 I think or 980 hours of audio stored on there so you're probably looking at yeah probably at five five six hundred hours possibly of stuff that I've got and as I said, there's like the, the crossovers. So yeah, probably about 600 probably, if not more, 100 hours of like fresh material. Fresh. He's fresh and exciting. He's so exciting to me. And uh, so I was, you know, at the time I didn't have that much, but I still had a lot of stuff. And some would limit it by the amount of sessions. Some would limit it by the the amount of data that was used. You know, by the um, the amount of people that would download or stream. So the basic plans. Some of them were free. Some of them were very cheap. But then they went up dramatically in price. Some of them. Uh, and I have literally, I would say, tried every single podcast host that's available and I've paid for every single one of them at some time, tested it out, tried to use it, sometimes found them difficult, sometimes found the uploading of the audios hard, uh, you know, or too slow or, you know, so I've had had lots of uh, issues with lots of different podcast hosts and also some of them are really good um, but they all kind of have their limitations but my most the ones that I can't just turn into a podcast review podcast host review and wasn't supposed to be but um, so I've used SoundCloud now I've been using it occasionally. I have a few months off, and I've had a few different accounts, uh, a few different um, podcasts on there. Probably, I don't know, let's say eight to ten over the years, maybe less. But uh, it was eight pound a month. 
to have unlimited amount of sessions, unlimited audios and unlimited uh, bandwidth, which is the, the amount of downloads that people can have. So it's unlimited, unmetered, but at eight pound a month. And it stayed at eight month eight pound a month for years and years and years and years. And then recently it went up to ten pound a month. But I think they left it at eight pound for me, because I've been with them, but because I closed the, the podcast, I went to reopen it like maybe two weeks later. Or maybe it was three or four weeks, I don't know. It might have even been a couple of months. Uh, but they, yeah, they put the price up to ten pound a month, which wasn't a huge shock. But I'm just thinking, it's like, what percentage is that? Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's twenty percent, isn't it? So I'm thinking that maybe they put it up nine pound a few years ago, but I didn't know about it because I've been paying eight pound continuously. F- but yeah, my last podcast, the podcast I've got now is, I think there's just over 50,000 plays on there, on the SoundCloud one. And that's got all my stuff on. It's about 900 recordings. Um, but the podcast before that, that I got rid of, and then I started a new one. I had over 200,000 plays on that one. And then I've had a few others, as I said, 40,000 or whatever, different times. Well, not 40,000, different times, but various like amounts. So I seem to have a different audience on SoundCloud compared to the audience I have on YouTube. And I seem to have a different audience on Spreaker. Because Spreaker is, um, I would say it's my main podcast host because it's it's the one I pay, well, technically it's the one I pay the most for, but it's not now because, well, it still is, yeah, still the most I pay for, 50, 50 pounds a month or something. And the... I've got quite a few different podcasts and I've split them up so instead of having everything on one podcast I've reduced it because it's just it's too much it's too confusing otherwise I mean how are you supposed to find a a stop smoking hypnosis course that I did in 2011 well no 2009 if it's if there's 700 recordings after it you know things get lost so with the iTunes podcast they only allow the last 250 recordings to show and I think it's the same with a lot of other podcasts as well who use the RSS feed from whatever your main podcast is and so Spreaker is the one that I've I've shared the RSS feed with the various different podcasts to iTunes and uh, there to iHeartRadio uh, Spotify and various different places uh, Podbean and a few days ago I thought you know what really because I have my website jasonnewland.com and I'm constantly changing it and using different hosts and I thought well I know that I've got videos on YouTube but I'm ultimately an audio person I'm a I make audio recordings that's pretty much what I do and I know that I did a lot of videos where I was on camera in the past but I don't really do that so much now and 
So really, my website ought to be a podcast. So I kind of pondered around it and danced around the uh, question mark shaped fire of thought and uh, the little song. What shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? Oh, I do a poo. What shall I do? What shall I do? Maybe do a wee instead. What shall I do? What shall I do? And I thought, hmm. My mind went to a different thing. And I started thinking about the these recordings. Because I've got two popular, well, two very popular, one very popular podcast, which is the Deep Sleep Whisper hypnosis sessions that's the most popular podcast I've got I'd like to say these are but you know the ones I'm doing now but these are the most growing ones if that makes sense these are the ones that are growing Uh, well actually the other one's growing as well so it's I don't know this that's hard to explain but I I like this one I kind of got a little I feel in a way I've kind of created something here that's not really about, if that makes sense. It's it's only really one other person that does like boring podcast and I'm very different to that person, very different. Uh, no, I kind of, because after I started doing these, I think about three months ago, I thought, you know what? Because I'll go and search for myself. Because I'll just see how, if I'm kind of being Googled, you know, if I'm kind of on there. And I came across someone else. I thought it was me, but it was someone else. And they've been going for years and years and very popular very much you know very very popular and uh, and I thought ooh so I thought I'd have a little listen so I wasn't influenced by the person and I didn't do this because of them because I'd never heard of them this is just something that I kind of thought I came up with but you know out of many years of just being really boring and being around people that bored me (laughs) That sounds terrible, doesn't it? And um, if there's one thing I know, I know boredom. I really, really, really do. Um, I have a doctorate in boredom. And tedium and that kind of... But also relaxation and sleepiness and calmness and it's a kind of mixing it all together you know, gentleness so mixing it all together into one big sleepy thing and so I kind of checked out this person it's American as I said it's a popular podcast and didn't really wasn't really what I would which is very different to me it's 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 British basically that's his way of doing it and this is my way of doing I suppose the same thing if it is about let me bore you to sleep it's it technically is exactly the same thing uh, as far as the uh, outcome is in the title uh, the required outcome or the intended outcome but with these things it's very much it's I guess it's personality based it to a degree you know if you're talking about your life everybody that does one is going to be different it's going to be a different person talking in their own way um, and if they're making stuff up it's going to 
So it's going to be different because everyone's different, aren't they? I think I explained that. So, you know, it's, I can't say I'm the only person in the world doing this. But I am one of the only people in the world doing this. You know, there's thousands of people doing ASMR audios and videos. Well, maybe not thousands, hundreds. And I'm one of them. So I'm in... There may be thousands, but I don't... I've actually gone through YouTube and I've counted every single one. There's not thousands. Uh, so there's hundreds, if that. Um, it sometimes f could seem like there's thousands because... Each person might have done hundreds of videos. So there are many, many thousands and thousands of videos out there for ASMR. Mainly females. Um, mainly kind of younger females. But there's, there's still some for men as well. And... I would say I probably got my foot in that group in a sense of I was kind of doing ASMR before it started but not realising it because I was doing softly spoken recordings of like relaxation and sleep um, before any ASMR was even heard of like on YouTube um, but I didn't know what ASMR was until 2011 when it was like really popular really became popular and I thought oh, I'll make I'll do like a purpose purposefully sl uh, whisper uh, stuff because people asked me to do it so I started doing that but I never got into, I can't do role play without laughing. That's, that's, I can't, I struggle with that. I actually, I've, tr I've tried to tell stories in some of these recordings and I started laughing and I had to stop the recording because I really go for the absurd. I love absurdity for some reason. I just it's. It, I've got very broad humour as like things that I find funny, and I can laugh at the most uh, filthy jokes, but also I laugh at the most absurd physical stuff as well. Um, or just the idea of something you know, tickle me and just so yeah I, it's not that I would put down in my uh, my dating profile online I like to laugh because you know I don't think it's really a hobby and I imagine who doesn't like to laugh it's not it's not uh, it's not a special a special personality quality I don't think enjoying laughing I love to cut my toenails now that would be weird I like breathing yes we all well I don't know if we appreciate it but we all definitely gain the benefits of breathing so I've got the podcasts, Spreaker, they're still up and running, and gaining a momentum, uh, which is nice, and then I thought, ooh, I'm going to get, not only am I going to get a, a I'm going to get a website for both of my most popular podcasts 
the Let Me Bore You To Sleep, these ones, which is letmeboreyoutosleep.com. And then the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast, which is deepsleepwhisper.com. And so I've now got those websites that hold my podcast. And it's a Podbean podcast. So it's a completely new podcast, which is also getting uh, listeners from Podbean as well. So it's my plan is to just leave it. I'm hoping that it's going to update itself in the RSS feed. If it doesn't, I'm going to leave it for a few days to see if it eventually uploads, you know, updates itself. If it doesn't, I'll just have to go and upload the new sessions as I make them. And that's fine. So it's a new source of gaining listeners, I suppose. So it's just a new a new place, uh, a new audience. And then I thought, hmm, I've been doing a lot of hmm in lately. And I thought, hmm, what about jasonnewland.com? Because I couldn't really afford to keep the website host that I've got if I was going to have these two extra podcast websites. So I thought, I'll get rid of that, which is 30 quid a month. And then I'll pay for another podcast host for the jasonnewland.com and just have all of my stuff. Well, not all of it, but just have the, the main stuff on there for you know and just update it so those people that just want to go to my main website and they like all maybe they like all the stuff I do or they like to you know just go to the the hub I only call it the hub um, to the home of my work of all of the stuff then you can just go to jasonnewland.com and you know, the idea is that all of the recordings will be there available and the newest ones will be there as well. That's kind of the plan on that one. But those that... Because there's going to be some people that they might only like the Deep Sleep Whisper sessions or they might only like the Let Me Boy to Sleep sessions and they don't want to be bothered with the other stuff. It's like, what? Did you say 980 hours? You just want to deal with the the ones that you like, maybe. Now you want to just continue to listen on whatever your preferred podcast host is, but it might be easier just to go to letmeboyyoutosleep.com. It's just up to you. It's all about doing what what is easiest. So it's kind of giving you... In a sense, every podcast host, every place where the post- podcast is, is just another front door key that I'm handing out. It's just another way of getting into the house, another way of listening to these recordings, you know? If that makes any sense. So, yeah. so it's just a case of trying to because I've done this thing but I, I kind of keep wanting to make changes but what I need need to do really is to just leave everything as it is step back and just let it roll you know let it just you know, because at the moment, if you go on the Deep Sleep Whisper dot com, I think I've got yeah seventy recordings on there. 
I got four plays or four downloads. And that doesn't, and that's, you know, perhaps I should take the stats off of the, off of the website so people can't see, but it looks really bad. It looks like I've just, you know, but if you go to the actual Spreaker website, and it will show that they've had like over 22,000 downloads since November. Uh, you know, so it's kind of you know, 22,000 plus, and then there's just four. You say, like, oh, this, this isn't good. So I just kind of, uh, you know what I mean? Just, uh, perhaps I need to take it off, but there's, there's the benefit. If you've got a lot of plays, a lot of downloads, then it looks good. So if people come on there and they see, you know, 40,000, 50,000, 150,000, 800,000, a million, a million thousand um, downloads of a podcast. Chances are they're going to think, ooh, this person's good. Oh, I bet they're good. They must be good if they're getting that many. But if they see four, no, they might not. Might not get the same effect. Might not be the same, you know. I mean, as it is, SoundCloud, the SoundCloud podcast is all on its own. I keep thinking I'll get rid of it, but I don't know. I just I kind of like it because it's one of the first ones I ever had, and I just just want to keep it for some reason. It's my little boy. It's my little my little podcast, you know. My little child. So I wish I still had the original one on SoundCloud because I have a lot of listeners on there now. But it's not all about the stats, but it can be. If you're not making any money out of something, then the stats become... In, you know, I don't know, more important, I guess, more interesting, because maybe like partly for ego reasons, but just to know that it's just not wasted time, you know. It's a bit like when you get a toilet fixed. You keep flushing it, you know. Maybe you've you've had to wait six days before the plumber could get there to fix the toilet, or maybe you you know you've got a landlord, or you know you couldn't do it yourself, so you had to wait for someone to come. And finally, the toilet, you know, you've you've been having to chuck water from a bucket down a toilet for it to like flush away, and now. You can use the flusher, the magic little flusher, that button, that little pedal, that little bit of metal or plastic or wood. I don't know, it shouldn't be wood, I don't think anymore, but. Or diamonds, you know, depends where you live. And it flushes. And you want to flush it again, but you can't because it hasn't filled with water yet. And you're waiting, and you can like flush it a little bit, but just a tiny little bit of water comes out, but you still feel good because you can now flush it. So that's what it's like for me, really. Checking my stats is just a bit like getting a toilet cleaned, getting a plumber in, <laughs> being able to flush my toilet every day or go on to the stats just to see how things are going usually more than once a day if I'm honest and a good day be a thousand plus 
downloads and it's growing from there but anything less than a thousand sometimes it's if I don't if I don't upload a new recording I might get less than a thousand downloads so it's a case of keep producing new recordings so that that level gets to the point where maybe in a few months time if I don't produce any new recordings I'll get 2,000 downloads so in order to get above 2,000 I'll have to upload something you know I think that makes sense to me but another thing hopefully you're not really listening anymore because I've bored you and that's the point but I would like to say thank you to everybody that does listen to these because in a really really strange way I can't really explain it Um, but in a really deep deep way um, this gives me my life meaning so you know doing these helps me and I'll be honest I think even if it stayed at a thousand downloads a day and it never got to the hundred thousand a day that I needed to get to in order for me to sort of maybe earn a living out of this I'd still do it still do it for the next 30 years until I can I'd still do it as long as I can talk I'll do it if I lost my voice I'd use a computer and use a you know a voice thing like Stephen Hawkins or something like that or write books you know I'll find a way around it I'll find a way to bore you inside I'll always find ways to bore people there's this person in I don't know what country he's from it's not really relevant but he's I think he's but he's really famous in that country it might be Germany or Austria something like that he's got blonde hair not again that that's relevant just because he's from Germany doesn't mean he's got blonde hair um, try and get rid of those stereotypes it's uh I I don't forget his name but what he does is he just looks at people he stands and there's an audience like watching him he just stands on a stage and just looks at the audience and they look at him they look into his eyes and they kind of get a sense of relaxation a sense of uh, healing a sense of uh, calmness uh, a sense of being fixed maybe if that's what they need Uh, a sense of replenished energy Um, but you don't like the healing thing going on and if I lost my voice I might give that a go just go around staring at people I'd do that anyway but it'd be good to get paid for it just look at people I like to think that maybe my voice can do that for some people in some way just uh, that was, did, you, did you hear that? That was my f- my big toe on my left foot cracking. I 
That's just the gas, isn't it? Like the gas between the bones, I think. I need to have a drink before I cough. All my battery's getting low on this, so I'm going to finish soon. So I'm not going to have a long recording because I've got 18% left on the battery. But what is the time? It's 3.01 in the morning. So I just, yeah, I wanted to just say thank you. I mean, hopefully no one's hearing this anyway, but if you are hearing it, I mean it. Genuinely, genuinely mean it. It. I can't always do these recordings. I'm not always in the right space to do it. So it, I don't know. We're not all, we're not all built to do everything that everyone else does. You know, we've all got our own kind of... You know, some people are built physically strong. They're kind of just born like that. and and Or very... Some people are built... Just have a really good mathematical brain. Or... Very good at technical stuff. Like, my dad... He's brilliant at anything to do with building or electrics or you know anything joinery plastering plumbing he could do anything you know and he (laughs) I go I'm laughing if I even say it he could make a canoe out of a whale's backside Uh, exactly it's it's a weird weird thing but he he's you know he's very very <laughs> he's very good at that stuff now i I asked my neighbor for help when I change a light bulb, so um you know we've all got our things that we are good at or that we I don't know if it's necessarily about being good even it's about. I think in order to be competent at something, we need to be able to feel relaxed and confident in what we're doing. If this makes sense, but you know, I've known lots of people, and admittedly, some people are really confident and particularly bad at what they do. So I realise that, you know, there's there's plenty of. uh, yeah, there are quite a few people like that, but the people that stands out for people that are really good at what they do, a lot of times they really feel confident or or and they put a lot of work into it. They devote their time to it and think about it. I think that's the thing with David Beckham, and I'm not comparing myself to David Beckham, of course, but he, what he did, although he's a model and he's a, he's an icon, sports icon, and he's probably one of the most famous footballers of all time, you know, um, just because he, he, he became bigger than football in some ways to a lot of people. And he's known all, all around the world. And but the thing that he did, and the only thing that he did from a child f- onwards, was focus on playing football. Practice kicking the ball from different parts of the pitch to get it into the goal. You know, the whole thing. You know, bend it like Beckham. That his special kick that he could do, his special goal, goal scoring kick, he practiced that right the way up. You know, I'm not sure when he stopped practicing. He probably still practice. Probably still does it now. I imagine he's never going to lose the love of football. 
and he probably plays football with his children. In fact, he might still be playing football now, I don't know. I really don't know, I lose track. But he focused everything on that. Before he was model, before he was doing adverts and making money and in other things, he, you know, everything, his life was based around kicking that ball and getting it in the net. I've got a lot of admiration for people that can do that, that are able to give their time and energy solely to kind of one thing. I know it's not possible for probably most people, you know? It's it's not realistic for most people. And it's probably maybe not even that healthy in some ways, depending on what it is. But I like the idea, I kind of like that idea of being able to do what comes naturally and find a way to earn a living out of it, a nice comfortable living, but at the same time, you know, be kind of healthy and happy and you know, just be, that's, that's it. And I might have found it with these. Because I can just be my boring self. My normal speaking voice is this. This is, I'm probably a little bit louder at times, to be fair. But, you know, I'm not a loud speaker. I'm not a quick speaker. I do... I prefer just to talk at people. I've talked about this before, but it's true. I do. You know, I get stimulated by, uh, in a conversation with another, with another person, what they say stimulates me to want to say the next thing, and I end up sort of sometimes talking over them. And I acknowledge it when it happens. But it's, it's not because, I don't know, it's not necessarily that I want to hear my own voice. Because I'm not really that bothered about hearing me speak. Although I like talking. Sometimes. But it's, it's because I want to hear what the person's got to say next. But I don't want to sit there for 10 minutes listening to them go into too much detail. It's like, oh, I've already heard enough of that. Now tell me more about that. But there... But I get pulled up on it sometimes. And, you know, we're talking about trips to America. And this person might say, well, I went, in, I went to America once. I went to... New York with my girlfriend and I'll say I'd love to go to New York because there's loads of comedy clubs there and it's uh, it's really uh, and then I want to talk about comedy clubs in New York but they can't contribute to that because they perhaps didn't go to any comedy clubs in New York but now that's what I want to talk about so I kind of, I do want to talk about New York, so do they, but I'm very specific, I don't want to hear about the park, I don't want to hear about, you know, what they had to eat, or what hotels they stayed in, I want to just talk about the comedy clubs, in that moment I mean, it doesn't mean that's all I'll ever want to talk about, but, and I kind of get sidetracked, and then I want to perhaps want to talk about my own experiences in comedy clubs because that was a big love of mine for many years still is really but I don't get to don't get to really go to any comedy clubs these days but 
used to love comedy clubs, my favourite places. Gay bars as well, I like them. We used to. I like the <laughs> I like the atmosphere. And you know what? I could go out this is the difference between going into a straight club, like a just a general nightclub and a gay gay club. The gay club, the whole time, I felt relaxed. And I never once left a gay club feeling lonely or being disappointed that I hadn't met anyone or disappointed that I wasn't going home with anyone. And I had that feeling many times in like normal, or not normal, but in a general clubs and the reason for that is because when I was leaving the gay clubs I was going home with someone <laughs> no I wasn't and it's because it wasn't about that it wasn't about that was loud wasn't it sorry it wasn't about it's just different it was just about relaxing and Maybe dancing and uh, even talking to the women, because uh, you know there's men and women in there. Just talking to the women could be just on a normal level of like, "Hi, how you doing?" You're right, without any, you know, um, pretense or make belief or. You know, pretending to be something I'm not. Like a good catch. Or an ideal boyfriend, you know, just... So it was, I don't know, I used to like, like going to gay clubs. I used to go with my friend Andre. That's uh, who Andre, my boy Andre, is named after. And neither of us were gay, but we both went in there. And... He was such a flirt, Andre was. He was really good looking person, man. You know, it. If you went into uh, like a standard nightclub, he'd have the women queuing up for him for some reason, and women loved him. I mean, he was he was a he was a handsome man, but smelly feet, proper. I lived with him as well, and he had a proper smelliest, smelliest feet. He had to leave his shoes outside in the garden seriously but um, we used to go into this gay club which was it wasn't far from where we lived so it was easy to get to and they were open later as well for some reason and he'd just be chatting well no he wouldn't be. he'd be letting the barman I think he was actually the owner of the club chat him up all night all night long because he got free drinks he just used to sit there and smile and laugh and I used to say he's uh, pretending, to th pretending to think but he, he just like just went along and it's just now that's a flirt And it's wrong, but I got a few free drinks as well, so it's not too bad. Um, but unlike Andre, I had to pay for mine. <sighs> yeah, I did that another time. I had uh, I had another friend who used to go into a, used to go into a gay club with him, and again he was don't know, as far as I know he wasn't gay. He might have been. I don't think he was, but he used to really. F flirt with the, to get free drinks it's very it's like quite because I remember we went upstairs because it was the owner of the, the bar we both went upstairs and those were the days where I was really didn't know about all that stuff I was only what 17 uh, I wasn't I wasn't the most worldly person at that age Still not really, but I'm quite 
Englandy, if you know what I mean. I've kind of been around a little bit in this country, but I have not really been around much worldwide. Been to a couple of countries, went to Bulgaria once. What not what well yeah it was once, but I stayed there for a few days and came back eventually. And uh went to France once, went to Belgium twice, and I went to Ireland twice, yeah. I've been to the Isle of Man and I've been to Spain. So yeah, so that's seven and England, so seven well, okay. Seven countries outside or seven Andre and oh that smells like your smells like the original Andre's socks oh so oh it's time to finish it's I didn't realise we're an hour in I like to keep things to an hour if at all possible hopefully by now you're bored board your socks off and you're just oh, sleepy so the good thing is that no matter what I talk about it's the voice, it's a trigger it triggers you to sleep because you get used to it you get used, it's like that's why we have that's why we have beds, that's why we have a bedroom that's why we have a specific place to sleep because your mind knows that's what is going to happen next it gets ready it prepares itself as soon as you go through your routine before you go to bed your mind starts to prepare I don't know if, if you find this but sometimes I'll, I'll feel a bit tired and I think oh, I'll go to bed now but by the time I've cleaned my teeth um, took me took my hair piece off hung it up um, got my makeup off you know, just general stuff and then I sit on my bed and I take my socks off one at a time mind you I've only taken my socks off one at a time isn't an age thing it's, a, it's always been the same never once I think did I ever take them both off at the same time but I might have done but I take them off one at a time, give a little grunt, I'm like, uh, 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 like that. And then I roll them into a, a bowl, a ball, so one inside the other. Drop them on the, I've got a new, new routine now. I used to put it at the bottom of the bed. Now I, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is what I mean by boring, because that's one of the most boring things anyone could ever say to you. <laughs> I used to roll my, my socks up into a ball and put them at the bottom of the bed. Now I put them to the side of the bed near my bottled water. But uh, the water's in the bottle. And uh, I leave my slippers at the side of the bed. I turn the light off. Sometimes I turn the light off first. But then I think, why make things difficult for myself? It's much easier to see when the light's on. The light switch is only just there. It's not like I've got to walk to the other side of the room. So I just usually leave the light on until I'm ready to like lay down on my bed. So I turn the light off, I lay down on my bed. And by that time, by at the point where I'm taking Miss me socks off, I'm actually feeling more and more tired. You know, that that walk from the bathroom to my bedroom, and it's not a long way. You know, there's no taxi involved, it's just a short walk. And I just feel whatever energy I've got just dripping out of my toes as I'm walking towards the bed. And I'm just, you know, and I feel the relief of just sitting down on the edge of the bed and then just getting the socks off and the feeling the air on my on my feet and my toes just feels nice. And then I can just lay down. I personally lay down on my left side. Sometimes I lay down on my back for a bit. 
it depends after I've turned the light off otherwise I will get back up and turn the light off and just the you know, just laying down my head touched the pillow my body does get heavy and my mind does start to just kind of empty so it's a nice feeling I sometimes actually sit here and I'll be doing something on the computer and I'll think I want to get this finished first before I go to bed although some would say ideally don't do stuff like that directly before going to sleep maybe do something that doesn't involve a computer screen or stuff but it's uh, it's whatever you feel suits you really I guess and I'll just be visualising myself laying down on my bed drifting off oh it feels so nice <sighs> yeah so sweet dreams and I'll speak to you again tomorrow I'll make another one of these let me bore you to sleep which is on letmeboydosleep.com take care Bye.